This is what we're going to do next, is her charming little chapeau that coordinates with her costume. I've used a, a silk velvet on the top and the black trim around. And on the inside, it's all lined properly. And on the back, we have a little ornament that we're gonna make to put there. So we start with this, with our buckram. And we've got two pieces of buckram to cut, that one and this one. So with the nice thing with the buckram, as you can see right through the pattern, and you just draw around the lines. On this one, we have to draw, let's turn this over so it goes up the right way. You're gonna draw the inner, the inner shape. Is that just a regular pencil? You're that using? is a regular pencil. Now you can use a marking pencil if you want to, but for this, it doesn't matter. it's, it's totally of, covered, yeah. so it doesn't matter. And then we'll draw our outside. And then I'm also gonna mark our center front and our center back for reference, because it's a lot easier if you have those in place. these out with the bad scissors the bad scissors which I am searching for right here <laughs> so we're just gonna cut on the outside line here oops we gotta stay on the line however it would help and then we are going to slash up to our second line So now we see we've got on our pattern piece, you've got slashes. Now these are a little close, I think. I got carried away. But you're just going to begin by cutting right up to the line, not beyond, but to the line. And then you'll use that line to fold I'm gonna cut a little bit off at the end here. And that's what's gonna make it fit into the sideband. I see you have a buckram circle there too, don't you? Yes, and there is a buckram circle, which I have space for somewhere. There's another little piece. So we're gonna take this now and using that line, we're gonna fold right on the line and fold all those tabs down. I can see it already taking shape. Yep. And this is fun because it's a sort of a teardrop shape. It's not oval because it's got a point on one end, but it's sort of a teardrop. And it fits nicely on the head because then you can take the front of this and it kind of comes over the front of her wig and you can make it sort of jaunty looking. Okay. So that's, that's our shape like that. And that's what it looks like inside. Nice. Then we're going to cut out side crown. Again, I've marked the center front. Of course, the center back is the overlap, so that one's easy. Sometimes it, when you can see through this, you kind of lose your marking line. Well, if they mess it up, they can just call you up or call us up and we'll give them another piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's encourage that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's try to do this right first time That's around. Right. That's right. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of curl the, the buckram like that. 
Yeah, that makes it easier, doesn't it? Yeah. And then we will get some glue and glue it together, and then I'll show you how to fit the crown into it. Okay. okay. We'll get the glue ready, and we'll be back. Yeah. You know, glue is a wonderful thing if you can use to get used to handling it right. And the glue that we're going to be using on this buckram is Fabri-Tac, which is a millinery glue because it doesn't soften the sizing on the buckram, which is important. Now, there's a lot of gluing on millinery. Old millinery is full of it. Usually looks brown on whatever gluing they were using then. But we'll use this because it dries quickly and it doesn't soften up. So we're just going to take, this is our overlap. We're just going to put a little glue on that. Then we're going to take this piece and line up. And do we have a measurement for that? Of no, over? it's what, whatever the pattern shows you. Okay. That's going to be it. So we'll just let that set. And then I've got a, whoops. Well, impatient. You gotta let it set. That's let it set. That's what I said, but that's not what I did. So we'll hold it for a second until it grabs. Would heat um, activate no. it? No. Mm -mm, I don't think so. No, it usually sets up pretty, pretty nicely. But you can see we've got some tails here that need to be trimmed off evenly. Maybe I don't have quite enough glue on it. That's what's giving me trouble. So let's just apply Ample it glue. again and put it on again and give it a little, a little time. Well, shall we let that set for a yes, second? Yes, we'll let's be do back. that. Okay, so now our glue is set in the back. I actually took out my little clips and used Which that. Which they're great to have. Yeah, are wonderful for lots of good things for that. So we're going to take this, and you notice there is a curve here. Now, this is the lower edge. This is the part that's going to be by her face. So you want to set the crown in the opposite one. Which is kind of a level area. Yeah. So we're going to take this, and we've got our center front marked, and we're just going to, with it even on the, on the board, we're going to set it in there. And you can see it sets in just nicely. Now the trick is we're going to have to take it out, or if we take and we pull back the tabs a little bit, then we ought to be able to put a dot mm -hmm. of glue under each that of these works great. tabs because it's a nice little spout on that and then we'll go in and flatten that out and just make sure it's level with the edge of the band and we actually have a little tool that would help with that i should get one for you to... oh is that right yes oh okay. let me go let me go grab one a tool okay, okay good we are back and and I've... Michael has provided us with a wonderful little tool, which I don't own. But well, now so you do. Now I do, which is always fun. And it's called a spudger, and you get it on the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. And what it is going to help with is get that, um, those tabs in place. And i get some more glue it's on here, nice and I'll show tool. you. It's a nice little tool. Yes, because it's got multiple, multiple ends. But if you look here, I can push it down so it's even with the hat edge, and then I can push it up on the side to push it in place. I think that's great. It's a nice little, Wonderful thing, nice little, little gadget. thing that can go in your, your little sewing bag yes. for traveling. Yes, certainly be in mind from now on. And I'll have to have another one How for my How often do I get table. to give you a tip? <laughs> hey, 
I'll take any you've got. I know, I know, you, <laughs> I know you will, but it's not very often I <laughs> put we share this. our tips. Here. Yes. At the Grovian Carmel Doll Shop, we we are not going to die with our secrets. <laughs> And obviously, I'm not either, since no. I share them all the yes. time. <laughs> I mean, that can do so much more than your finger could do. Oh, it does, because it's got a point on it here where I can get but right it's also down in the groove too. and push with it. So it's wonderful. Okay, well, let's continue this, and we'll let it set up so that it doesn't come apart on us. And it won't take long because it no. didn't, didn't take long at all. No. We just have to be a little bit patient. That's all. Just a hard thing to come by sometimes. So that's, that's I think our that, hat for that, that looks nice and sharp, Cheryl. Don't yeah, it does. It does, and it pushed it right up to, right up to the, to the edge there, which is what was important. So I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, inexpensive little tool, but it yes, really but can handy, mm -hmm. a handy, handy thing. Okay. So we'll let that dry, and we'll come back to it, huh? Yeah. Well, we might as well go ahead while oh, that's okay. drying. All right. Let's go ahead and cut out our padding for the, for the top of the hat. So I've cut the pieces out. I've got padding one and padding two, and then I'm just actually gonna cut this off here. Oh, I think I have to have sharp scissors for this one. Not my craft scissors. So we'll just cut this out. And this is number two is gonna be our top piece. Number one is gonna be the bottom. Now they stacked on top of each other? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, so you get a, a little poof underneath and then a bigger that covers the whole thing. A lot of millinery, historic millinery uses padding as, it uh, does. as a, a yes. element. And it does soften the edges. I mean, you really see a much softer look to it with, with that. Sorry for the background noise, but Eddie's fulfilling orders. Yay! Including some of mine, which yeah, I yes. really like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to now take our glue again. And I'll pick out one place that's falling down there. Okay. And we're going to take the small piece, padding number one, and we're just going to dot some of the Fabri-Tac on it and place it here like that. Oh, I see. So it's giving it kind of a real a peak. It is. Because a lot of times in buckram, when you're doing these hats, they end up sinking like this, which is not what you want. No. You want it to be going the opposite mm. way. Mm -hmm. So the padding helps build that up a little bit. So, and because it's going to be covered then with our velvet, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's glued all over. It just needs to be yeah. enough to attach just, it. Yeah, it's going to... The, the covering is going to hold it in place, yeah. too. So you, then you can see the little bit of a dome we're getting out of this. Mm -hmm. And it's not flat, which is going to look much more attractive. Okay, we'll let that dry. Okay, so we have glued our padding on now. And now you can see the little doming we're getting out of this because the little pad is under here. The big one is over and gives it a, such a pretty shape on the top. So now we need to cover it with the velvet. So I've taken the velvet and put my velvet pattern on it. And I'm going to cut this out.
Um, and we've got Annabelle giving us our background you know, music. We, we, we are giving a really boring class. She's snoozing. She's just, yeah. <laughs> and adding a little bit of, of fun. Okay, so now we're going to take and we're going to go to the machine and we're going to put a gathering stitch around the edge. Gathering. How many stitches per inch are you doing? I'm doing like four and a half to five on this. Okay. So these are big stitches. Yes. Yeah, because we want to gather it over. So I mean, I'm, they could do this by hand. Too, they could. could. They could. But since you have that Bernina here. Right. And did you notice the special foot on my Bernina? No. It's a foot that has an eighth inch side on it. Oh, nice. So I've always oh, got my, my eighth inch right there. And then of course the feed dog is at a quarter. So there's a, an eighth and a quarter already marked on here. Oh, nice. My machines are antiques. I just have to, I just have to <laughs> guess. guess. <laughs> Well, this one's pretty old. Actually. Yours are not as old as mine. No, I know. I have seen your special machine. Okay. So we're to there. And then. And we're going to catch our thread. And we're going to pull. Just enough so it hugs the hat. And it pulls very easily on this silk velvet. I mean, it's really... And the way you're putting it on, it's going to be basically... You're basically... It's it's in the bias, isn't it? No, actually, I cut it on the straight. But, but the way you're putting it on, it will make it in the bias. It will? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're not putting it straight up and down, are you? Yeah. How are you? I oh, am. Oh, okay. I am. Right. I am. So then when I get it on about equidistant around, then I'll pull that thread again, which will snug it really oh, snug. Oh, because it. we do have kind of up and down ribs, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it through the camera so you don't catch oh, it on yeah. that. I'll grab the other, the other gathering thread. And so there, there we are. We want to keep it as smooth as possible going over. So you can kind of readjust your gathers there. But that's what mm -hmm. we're looking at. Now, are we going to do uh, hand French glue it in place? Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we want to do anything else? I mean, this is so easy. <laughs> And we've got the nice little nozzle on this glue, so it just you know. And I have re I have there. repurposed lots and lots of old hats, and they are sewn and glued uh, together. Yes, they so are. So we don't need any comments. No, it's, because this is totally right. legit. It is totally legit. I mean, I've I've deconstructed some really fantastic, I'll you know, um, hats that have, you know, it's a just tragic that they're, <laughs> that they're falling in that apart, shape, but, yes. you know, there's nothing you can really do no. but repurpose them. And yeah. then when you start to take them up apart, it really is a revelation. It is, to see what's there, yes. Yeah. And there really is no right way or wrong way to No, there isn't. It seems to be that it goes about any way you want it to go. I think, you know, hat making was a really creative process for the people that did it. Well, And I they mean, just made it up as they went along. Well, and the, some so. of the greatest fashion designers started out in millinery. Did they really? Oh, Halston. Oh. Chanel. Lan Van, 
Okay. I'm sure there's more, but those are the ones that just came Come to, to mind. mind. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's really fun. I have been a hat fan since I was very small. I used to make... And, and by the way, of the ones I just mentioned, I think that Halston's probably the greatest and, mm -hmm. and the least appreciated Appre today. Appreciated, But yeah. if you go back and look at his clothes, I mean, you can wear those today. anytime. Yes. Exactly. Exactly, yes. Okay, so that there. That looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does. Okay. All right, what do we do next? Now we're going to start the lining. So okay. I think we'll stop for a minute, let this set up. Okay. And then we'll, we'll start come back. the lining. We'll be back. Okay, we have our velvet in place now. Now we're going to be lining, and it's going to be a little bit unconventional because I'm going to line it before we finish it, which I usually do the lining at the end. But in this case, I'm going to be first putting four dots of glue in here in the center, and I'm taking a one-inch piece of silk, and I'm laying it over that, just so that when we peek through, whoops, peek through hat this is covered here and you just don't see buckram right because we're going to make that nice little circle out of our out of our a little drawstring yes to make a drawstring so this is the the background so we have our pattern piece here so that you're it's readable for you and we're going to press in a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch on one end so let's do that with our mat and little cricket iron. Very handy to have for... And it's very hot. And then we'll also press in one short end. And that clunk, clunk, clunk you hear in the background is Annabelle with her, <laughs> with her cast. <laughs> Which Poor she, baby. She, she manages. <laughs> yes. So now we're going to do a running stitch right next to that edge of the fold. You see, I just started it. So we're well, just... Now are you using a mill millinery needle for I that? am. Okay. I am. Well, we're Which doing millinery. We're so... doing millinery. Now, what's the difference? What is a millinery needle? Well, I always think it's just longer. It's longer, but it's also flexible. Right, it kind of has it a has nice a bend. It has a bend to it, where um, other needles are rigid. Are rigid, and this one, can you see the bend I'm yeah. getting out of it? Which means you can get in places when you're yeah, I like to tacking use those. things on. And I'm a real fan of clover black, black gold needles. Those are my favorites. Well, I'm very lucky that uh, I have a good friend, Elizabeth Ann Coleman, that when she went to Japan, oh, she, she brought, brought me a stash of needles <gasps> wow. from the best um, oh, yes. needle maker because she knows that we do a tremendous amount of sewing and costuming okay. and restoration for Thoughtful the dolls. gift. Yeah, wasn't that perfect, sweet? Perfect, perfect, perfect. But she's going to have to go back to Japan and soon. And get some more. <laughs> but I also have Kathy Turner that I can send over. Well, true. Hey Kathy, when you're there, <laughs> go to the go to the needle store. I usually don't stand up to sew, so it's a little well. Thank you. Awkward. <laughs> it makes it so I have, I can sit down. <laughs> Well, we'll finish that and we'll come back. Okay, so we have taken that running stitch. That looks and lovely. Hold it up. You can see the back with all of its strings, but you can see it here. And it, then I overlapped the the one with the fold back into this little what I consider a peak hole. And then I'm just gonna lightly press that because it seems to lay down better if it's pressed a little bit. 
that. It's a beautiful color too. It is. And I'm gonna take it. It's kind it. of picking up the gold in the mm -hmm. costume. Yes, that's true, because we have that lovely gold stripe. Then we're gonna put this inside and we're going to center that peak hole over our square that we have in there. And I usually put a little dot of glue just so it stops moving on me. Make sure it's centered, yes, okay. So I'm gonna put a little dot of glue on the back of this. Maybe cut a few, few whiskers off. We can use our spudger to help you, too. Oh, exactly. Perfect. We'll use the pointed end this time. So I'm going to push it. I put glue on the back of this, and we're just going to push it down so that it just grabs at that spot. I try to keep a nice circle in there, because it's really cool to look on the inside of the hats and see these linings. Mm -hmm. I think these are quite, quite interesting. Okay. So, and by the way, lining I've seen regularly on ladies' hats and doll hats, that they use glue to, to yeah, position to secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we'll take this, what's what we have here, and we're going to wrap it over the edge of the frame so that we end up with a clean, a clean finish here on the and we didn't close this up because we've got the ability to adjust, adjust that if we don't close it up. I like to finger press that down and then we're going to just again use a dot of glue here and pull that over so that it's stuck all the way around. Now, when the glue dries, won't it help kind of the the help this keep its shape? It will. It will add. It'll add some strength. stiffness. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I didn't wire this. I didn't think there was any no, I don't think necessary to. to wire it, which would have been a lot more work. And I don't think for this style of chapeau, it really it makes, doesn't. Wouldn't it, it's add not anything. adding anything except a lot of work. And it would hurt her head. It would. <laughs> So we're just gonna snug this around and overlap and then we will have this lovely lining oh, on that the looks inside. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we need to trim off all these, what I call whiskers, all this silk strings and threads yeah, they're not and all gonna, that. They're not going to uh, unravel anymore. Oh, no, it's not going to unravel anymore, but just for neatness, because mm -hmm. the last thing we're going to do is finish the hat with a little fur, or what I call chenille. It's a fake fur, but it really works beautifully. On no those. animals were harmed. No <laughs> animals were harmed. We're PETA safe. <laughs> and I'd never do anything to harm an animal anyway, so I'm just too much of a soft heart. So this is our chenille, which is really fluffy and nice. And the last part is to take... And it looks like natural fur because... It does. In this, in this era, there, were, there was no dying of furs. So oh, everything would okay. be a natural... Uh-huh. Um, so I'm going to just run a bead of glue here and go halfway and then put our fur down. And it's covering all that, isn't it? It is. It's covering all the mess, which is what I love about millinery. You can cover up anything. Make a big mess, just put something over it. Yeah. Normally it's a bow, but hey, now it's, uh, it's fur. <laughs> right. Now it's the fur on this costume. 
And I love how it just sort of twists around and does its own thing. Do the last here, and then I think I've got a little too much, so we may want to cut a piece off back here. But we do have our decoration that's going to cover up the join, which you'll never see anyway, because, because of the fluffiness. Put one more dot here. I think if this were real fur, it would be like a mohair, don't you see? Mm, mm -hmm. you, know, a, 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 you know, a kind of a short mohair, not a long mohair or curly, but... Yeah. So, there in a blink of an eye, once we get rid of this th white thread up here, we, we have our hat finished, except for our decoration at the back. All right, shall we go okay. on to the decoration? Okay. Okay, so we have our chapeau ready for its final at the end. And I've taken the piece off of my original one and you can see that it's a little black buckram and I use black because we can see through those beads when we put them on and we wouldn't want it to be white or cream. But we're just gonna take your ribbon and we are it's going It's the to, whole piece, isn't it? It's the whole piece. And I just ran a running stitch down the one side after I turned it under a quarter. And then I gathered all, I ruched all of that up. And untwisted it. And I'm going to put a circle of glue on the edge. And you're using your same glue? I'm using my same glue because it won't soften the buckram. And then I'm going to use our handy tool here. Our little put smudger. And smudger to put it in place. And I'm taking it about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of that buckram. I'm going to move my gathering along here like that. Isn't that a nice little tool to have? Oh, it book? is. I love this. <laughs> How did I ever live without it? This well, is... see, I helped you today. You did. I'm not that mean. <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> I could let you suffer, ruin those beautiful nails. Right. When it makes it so easy. And you've got such precise control, too. That's the thing I like. You can well, this fiddle is, with thank your... Thank you, Angela D. You're yes. watching. Yes. I remember when I watched oh, the one got she some great did. Little... And she has. She's come up with some great stuff that we just can't live without. No. No. Okay, so we'll let that Actually, dry. Actually, that's pretty just to like that. It looks like a sunflower. <laughs> it does. I mean, on the camera, it looks just like a does sunflower. Does it? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could just plop one one little bead in the I middle. think I would try just one bead because it I think so. It looks it nice, doesn't it? looks like doesn't a sunflower. It? Okay. I'll just pull the gathering just or, a um, tiny. That's little, there. What do they call the, the daisies that are... Um, Black-eyed Black Susan? Black-eyed Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we're finished. Then we're finished. Okay, we'll, we'll put it on the hat and we'll come back and show you. Okay, now it's interesting. Sometimes you have to change your mind if you think it looks better another way. And this was my original with the four glass beads. But when we were working with this, decided that actually one was much it's, nicer. It's very, I, I just think it's better. It is, it mm -hmm. is, you're right, it's better. So we're gonna just put our magic glue on the back and... And this we're gonna put quite a bit, huh? Yeah, we are, so it doesn't fall off. And then pull a little bit of our, our fur away. Look how cute and that is. that's the finish right there. All right, that's okay. darling. All right, we'll, we'll be back. Okay.
we have our costume finished and I wanna show you how to fluff up the fur, this wonderful bunk of brush um, I use for this. I also use for fluffing tassels and pom-poms, but if you just- And fringe. Oh, and fringe. I that which is that. the most important. Yes, right. But on this, the most important is to make this fur just lightly go back together. So. And it will, it'll kind of help pull out the, the fibers that we've sewn down too. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. But it's just lightly going over it and you can see what a difference it makes. It makes it all nice and even. So this is, if you don't own one of these tools, you need to own one of these it's, tools. It's real, well, it's well really worth it. It's really well worth it. So, okay. So she's finished. All right, so what are we gonna do next? So now she needs a muff because it's a winter costume. So that's what we're gonna start next. Okay, well, we'll be right back. We're gonna begin with the silk velvet. And I've already sewn two rows of gathering by hand down this each side. And if you look at the pattern here, you'll see here's your, here are your gathering lines. One's about an eighth and the other one's a quarter. So we're going down both sides to begin with. That's easy because we can see and we can measure how what that is. A little harder to get the center down the center front so I found if I just took the silk velvet and folded it in half and just creased it here, then I end up with a nice line that I can use. So we're it's gonna- It's not gonna crush it or anything? No, it's not. And besides, this is gonna be all rouge so that that line right. is gonna go away, but it does give you a place where we can start. Um, and I think they have to be very careful with this because this is antique material. This is antique material, and so while we're it, talking about that, it's not all perfect, but by the time it gets ruched up, it doesn't matter. Right. So don't get all excited if you have a little crease or something in it. So we're just gonna use that center Because this is the real stuff. Yeah, it is, and it's so beautiful and so nice to work with. So I'm just gonna and do- And soft. Very you soft, and it part. ruches with the you know, with the silk, it gives the highlights of all the ruching. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna sew, obviously, on one side of that line and on the other side of that line. And then we're going to take that and we're going to place it on the batting because a muff has gotta have a little padding under it. We finished all of our, our gathering on the edge and down the center. Now we're gonna take it and pull the ruching all at the same time. Because we're gonna want to know that that's all together. Listen how beautiful it is with the silk, the way the mm, silk yeah. catches the light Very here. Very Yes. So now we're going to fit this onto our batting. So we, I like to ruch it up further than I need and then pull it out lightly to fit. So we'll just stick a few pins in here so we know we have a fit. And then we're going to steam it to set the, the ruching in place. When you get your, your lengths right, then you can tie off your gathering threads. But we want to distribute this. Instant luxury. Yes. And it feels so good when you oh, yes. oh, this silk velvet is marvelous. Not pin my finger in that. You know, in the world before heaters and card <laughs> heaters and now, can you imagine the, having a um, a lap robe out of silk velvet. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> this you just have to zhuzh it. You do. You just see that we've got it along like we want. 
and I allowed just a little bit wider silk velvet than I did the batting so that we, we have the ability to mound it up a little bit and make it fluffier. take our iron and just like we did on the other the other pieces we're just going to hold it over not touching it. You don't want to crush it do we? no we don't want to crush we're it. not doing crush velvet no not, no not this time and then we'll just let it dry until it yes and it's important to let it dry yes because if yeah. you start with it now it won't hold up no all right, okay. we'll let this right. dry and we'll come okay. back. All right, so we have our ruched velvet onto the padding. And I've already done what I'm gonna tell you to do now, which is you're going to begin by just doing a running stitch all the way around on all four sides. And then if your center doesn't want to stay down like it's supposed to. You could also tack this a few times so that it stays. But not too much, though. Huh? No, so not too be, much. You don't want fluffy. To, you you want it to be fluffy and look and look elegant like this. But a couple of times yeah, it wouldn't it. hurt to, yeah. just to tack it down there so it stays. Because fabric is alive. It, moves. it is yummy, yummy, yummy. Now you're going to take your lining. And you're going to, this is, I haven't trimmed it yet, but you're going to, oh, first, we've got to tie off all of these threads now that it's tacked down. I don't. No reason for them? You know, there's no reason for them actually at all, but I would feel a little more secure getting them, getting them tacked down or tied off and then I could cut them off. And we're going to put the lining over it, and just turn these You're going to give down. me that thread because I'll use that for my <laughs> well, project. With yeah, your I'm, project I'm, over you here. Know, okay. I'm now not we're as gonna... extravagant as you think. <laughs> Take this and pin this together, and you're going to find that your lining is wider <clears throat> than your velvet which is okay. So when we get it pinned, you're gonna have a hump in the middle and you'll see how that works when we when we go to, to turn it. It's going to be <clears throat> our bindings on the edge. So this is gonna be what it looks like when you're finished tacking it all the way around. Not tacking it, sewing it all the way around. And then we'll just cut this end off if I may grab the scissors here. Now it's important that you do the ends as well as the sides. No, not yet. Sorry about that. You wouldn't get it turned, would you? No, I was wondering. No, that. that's not going to work. Did you have some magic? I had magic. It's just going to look like that when you're finished. So you're going to just sew do down the sides these ends. Just sew down the ends. Make sure that your black, I'd actually do it from the wrong side, so that your black is right up against your green. And I'm just probably a scant quarter coming down here. Okay. Okay. Now are then, you gonna do that by hand or by machine? You could, I would do it by hand because I have more control. Okay. This is sort of going in and out. You want this to match up here. And by machine, it's gonna scooch around a little bit. I mean, okay. really good on machine, go for it. but. I wouldn't, because I'd end up taking it out and having to do it again. All right. Okay. So we'll sew that up and we'll come back? Okay. Well, actually, we can go right to here, because okay. this is going to be what you're going to end up okay. with. Okay, we'll just show. All right. So when we turn it, then you're going to end up with the backside lined. You're going to end up with a, probably about between an eighth and a quarter of binding on this edge. 
And we're going to have this because this is going to be where our fur sits when we're finished. So when we get to this point, you're going to take and turn down the back about a quarter of an inch and just whip stitch that in place to the lining. Let me get to that point and I'll come back. Okay. Okay, so we have turned our lining to right sides, wrong sides together. And then I, I sewed, like you know, stitch in the ditch kind of thing down here so that binding stayed in place. As you can see, my barely see my stitches running here. We can see them. Can mm -hmm. you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the black. You did like a little stab stitch kind of? Yes, I did on that. Then I turned the ends, which we already had basted down, to the back, and I whipped them down here on both sides. Okay. And then we're going to do, to attach this together so it'll be perfect, we're gonna do a ladder stitch. And Michael, I want you to show them the illustration of the ladder stitch. This is a stitch we don't use very often, but it certainly is effective. And <laughs> what? Well, your diagram looks a little funny. <laughs> I mean, I understand what it is, but it could it could be something else too. Yeah, no, listen, <laughs> where is your mind, Michael? <laughs> Right. Well, they can decide for themselves. <laughs> That's a beautiful oh, diagram. Oh, it is. It's fabulous. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to learn to do the ladder stitch after that frivolity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's so. do it. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to be doing, basically, is we're going to do a stitch where this butts together. And in order to do that, you're going to start from the back and you're going to come up. Because it also has to have a certain amount of movement too. Yes, it? it does. So you come up and usually in stitching, we're going end up sort of on a diagonal. Mm -hmm. This is directly across. So we just take like this and then we're going to run that stitch down the fold and come out. We're going to come across, we're going to catch this directly across. And they have a fabulous back. diagram that they can work with. <laughs> yes, that... there is a fabulous diagram in your pattern for this yes. that, that you, you can learn from. So it's just this, it's just back and forth and back and forth. But the key is it's directly across each time and then directly across run through the fold, come out about three-eighths of an inch, back and forth. And then when I open this up, you can see... It's a really nice finish. Mm -hmm. You can you can hardly, with all this ruching, even see yeah. where the seam is. Yeah, it, it's a real nice... Yeah. So that's and a it makes this, stitch. There's other ways to do this, but this makes this kind of a simple process. Yes, so, right, right. I mean, I think that's really nice. Okay. So we'll finish that. We'll finish that and we'll come back and finish the trim. Okay. All right, so we've we've gotten to here, we've done our ladder stitch, joined that, nearly invisible. You could put that mm -hmm. anywhere, um, but I tend to put it at the bottom of the muff. So now we need to do the trimming of the ribbon and the last of our fur. So we're gonna take our 18 inches of ribbon and we're gonna cut it in half and then we're gonna do a running stitch down the edge, turning the ends in so that they're finished. And then I pressed that. Then I took it back to the pin and press, well, our felt board, pinned it in place like we did before. We're gonna steam ruche it and it's gonna, if it doesn't stick to me, it's gonna come out looking like that you're going to pull it up to five and a half inches and tie it off then you're going to take it to the inside edge here and you can either work from the inside or the outside i worked from the inside and i just whip stitched it on all the way around and i did leave this end open i didn't want to 
close it for some reason. I just think it looks a little better open like that. When we've got that in place and tied off, then we'll take our fur and we'll tack that down all the way around like that so that that's sitting on our black binding here. And then the last thing is we take a bit of black ribbon, make a little knot in it, and attach it on the inside for her to hang. All That's right, it. so we'll, we'll go and get that uh, set up, okay. finish that up, and we'll show you the finished product. Okay. All right, our ribbon's all in place now. Then we put a row of black fur around it, and we add it to the doll. Oh, we put that little tab oh, on it too. Oh, yes, yeah. so Just that little. it hangs over her wrist. And then she is getting ready to go over the river and through the woods. Well, Cheryl, this was a great workshop. I learned so much and I had a lot of fun working with you. Well, it was always fun to sit and talk to you for days and days, days and days. days. <laughs> although, although this is this is a very uh, lovely project to do. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think you'll have yeah. a lot of and fun. And they'll have with a lot it. of fun with it. Yes. All right. Thank okay. you, Cheryl Williams. It was great having you. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.